Welcome in to the Ravens Rundown by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. Appreciate you joining us. Coming up on today's show, we have an updated list of potential free agent targets for your Baltimore Ravens as week one of free agency is in the books. Now we look ahead to week two and see if the Ravens will make a move of some sorts. Now, obviously, we're still waiting on the Lamar Jackson situation to play itself out. But besides Lamar, I got 10 names that we are going to look at on today's show. Speaking of Lamar Jackson, by the way, if you think Lamar is going to be back with the Ravens this upcoming season, go ahead and like today's video. If not, if you think that they will move on from him and he'll play somewhere else, tell me why you think that. Why do you think Lamar would not be back in Baltimore? Like today's video, if Lamar is going to be back next year, if not, comment and tell me why you didn't, do not think so, and we'll get started with today's show. So here's what we're going to do. I am going to break this down by positions of need for Baltimore and give you a couple of names for the Ravens of who they could be potentially considering for those said needs. And I know that the Ravens have not made any moves just yet, and there's question marks about how much money they can actually spend, but let's just talk about some guys potentially if they were to pursue the free agent market to potentially uh, fill in those gaps for positions of need of sorts. Let's start the wide receiver spot. Obviously, you begin with DJ Chark of the Detroit Lions, who is a very talented receiver, and you look at where this Ravens receiving core is with Rashad Bateman and company there, DJ Chark immediately would be one of your top receivers on this roster, either your number two or he would be like 1B of some sorts to Rashad Bateman. That could be a very good one-two punch. DJ Chark coming off a season where he had 30 catches for 502 yards and three touchdowns. Let's see what he could potentially do in the Ravens offense. Next up is Odell Beckham Jr. We've talked a lot about Odell here on the channel over the last several weeks, and there were reports that came out within the last few days that the Ravens and OBJ had interest in each other. Obviously, he's coming off a season where he did not play in 2022 with the torn ACL that he suffered in last year's Super Bowl. And so he's looking for a new home of some sorts. You wonder how he'll be coming off the injury. His price tag also obviously a big factor. He says that he's not necessarily looking for $20 million like what people were reporting, but he's not looking for just $4 million either. That That's not enough, that he's going to need more than that. So with that, if you had to choose between these two receivers, are you going with DJ Chark or are you going with Odell Beckham Jr.? Which receiver would you rather have? Let me know in the comment section. This is our pinned comment today. You might get an ad break. If so, take advantage of it. Type DJ for DJ Chark. Type OBJ for Odell Beckham Jr. Let me know which one you would rather have. DJ for DJ Chark. OBJ for Odell Beckham Jr. Let me know in the comment section below. Next up is Jarvis Landry. Jarvis Landry kind of is under the radar of sorts uh, this free agency period compared to last go round when he was talked about a lot. And Jarvis Landry, that's the guy that, you know, still can play at a high level, I think, in the National Football League and could be a nice weapon for somebody to have. We talked about Jarvis Landry last year potentially going to the Baltimore Ravens. And I mean, you, you look at Jarvis and he's got the size, he's got the speed, the athleticism. I think he still has something to bring to the table. If he's healthy out there, Jarvis can be a nice receiver uh, for any team for that matter, and I think the Ravens would be lucky to have him if he can stay healthy, but that's a big question. Let's move on from the receiver position, go to the offensive line now. The Ravens potentially looking for a replacement for Ben Powers. Now, we talked about this on the channel a couple days ago where the Ravens have a decision to make, right? In the post-Ben Powers era, do you turn like to a guy like Ben Cleveland, or do you look at other options? Well, for all intents and purposes today, let's just show you some potential options uh, to replace Ben Powers on the offensive guard. You go with Dalton Reisner out of uh, the Denver Broncos, uh, who had a very fine time there with Denver, and of course came from Kansas State, and was a uh, outstanding player there. He's a very good leader. He's very vocal in the locker room. Gave up three sacks this past year. And pretty athletic, I would say, in his own right. I don't think that there would be much drop-off going from Ben Powers to Dalton Reisner. In fact, you might have two very similar players in their own right. 
Uh, but that's a decision that the Ravens are going to have to make. Do you want to go with Ben Cleveland, or would you rather go ahead and sign a free agent for that spot or potentially draft somebody? Uh, we'll see what they do. But Dalton Reisner would be the first one to come to mind for that. Also got to mention David Edwards of the Los Angeles Rams. He's another possibility for Baltimore to look at for this position. Uh, Edwards, though, did not play a whole lot this past season. Just four games, allowed three sacks in those four games. And you would have to think that he'll be considerably cheaper than what Ben Powers would be or uh, what Dalton Reisner would be on the open market because of that time that he missed last year. And when he did play, he didn't play that great necessarily, allowing three sacks. So with that, got a few more names to get to as we cover areas of need for Baltimore. But I want you to get in that comment section and name a player you think the Ravens should sign. Who comes to mind that you'd like to see on this Ravens roster in 2023, give me a name or two that you'd like to see on this team here in free agency. Folks, we have the Ravens covered like no one else does with daily Baltimore Ravens news and rumors. We're uh, discussing free agency, the trade market. We're getting you ready for the draft. This is the place to be. If you're a real member of the Ravens flock, you better subscribe. You ain't alive if you ain't subscribed to the Ravens rundown. The best part about it, too, it is absolutely free. Doesn't cost you a thing. So go ahead and subscribe right now. YouTube.com slash Ravens TV. We do this because we want to talk Ravens football, and you guys deserve the absolute best. So go ahead and subscribe now. You'll be glad you did. Turn on notice so you never miss a moment. Let's uh, move ahead to the cornerback position now. The Ravens looking for a second option at corner besides Marlon Humphrey, somebody to be on the outside with Marcus Peters, of course, entering free agency. And the first name that comes to mind for me is Rocky Sen, who spent this past year with the Las Vegas Raiders. Previously, it was with the Indianapolis Colts. Although he didn't have any interceptions last year, I think what you see from Rocky Sen, this is not a guy that's going to end up with five or six interceptions and be a, a playmaker when it comes to turnovers that way. He is more the shutdown type, the no-fly zone effect is what you'll see. It's going to be very hard to throw the ball against Rocky Sin. That's his style, and I think that could be uh, a good match with Marlon Humphrey on the other side, potentially, to pair these two. Now, there's another possibility of bringing Marcus Peters back. That's always an option as well, and if you're to bring Marcus Peters back, for me, it's probably because you didn't get Rocky Sin. And in the case of Marcus Peters, if you do bring him back, you hope that you get him on some type of discount, get him cheap of some sorts uh, as far as that goes. Because the money that he was making previously, where Marcus Peters has had at this point in his career, his value is not what he was making previously. So Marcus Peters, not bad, but he is getting older, and so you have to take that into account. And he's had the health concerns as well. Has missed a lot of football over the last couple of years. So I'm not opposed to bring back Marcus Peters, but I have preferences as far as I'm concerned. And obviously, you can look at draft options as well. We know the Ravens have talked a lot about potentially drafting uh, even as early as the first round at that cornerback spot. Will the Ravens re-sign Marcus Peters? What do you think? Is he back in Baltimore? If you think he is, type Y for yes. If not, type in for no. Let me know in the comments section if you think the Ravens will re-sign Marcus Peters or not. Y for yes, in for no. One more corner to get to. That is Shaquille Griffin of the Jacksonville Jaguars, formerly of the Seattle Seahawks. He was a pro bowler uh, previously. He's coming off a year where he missed a lot of time, only played in five games, didn't have any interceptions, but when Shaq Griffin is healthy, he can be a dynamic football player and, you know, is that borderline one or number two corner depending on what team he's on. Shaquille Griffin, you bring him to Baltimore, he feels like a Raven, doesn't he? I would really like Shaquille Griffin, and his price tag shouldn't be a whole lot either, uh, in all honesty. I think that he would be cheaper than Rocky Sin, but not quite the same potential, maybe, of Rocky Sin uh, on that level. We move to the edge rusher position. A couple names to keep in mind. Uh, Yannick Nguakwe uh, of the Indianapolis Colts is uh, a name to watch. He is going to be heavily sought after. He's been talked about by teams all across the NFL uh, over the last couple weeks or so. He's kind of weighing his options. This one probably out of the price range for the Baltimore Ravens, but he's the best out there at this time. 
Uh, something to consider there coming off a season where he had nine and a half sacks, eight tackles for loss, uh, just a dynamic player uh, Yannick is and is going to make any team that he's on better instantly. And then lastly is Robert Quinn, uh, who went to the Philadelphia Eagles, was uh, traded there, what was that, midseason when he ended up in Philly, and uh, obviously was with the uh, Chicago Bears prior to that. Ten tackles, one sack, two tackles for loss. I think the Eagles were expecting more out of Robert Quinn this past year, so that was kind of disappointing. But still, nonetheless, he's had a very good career and a good track record he could potentially bring to the Baltimore Ravens. Tell me this, uh, looking at all the free agent options and where the Ravens are at right now, what is the biggest need for this team? What do they need to improve upon the most this offseason, whether it comes to free agency or the draft trades, whatever it may be? What do they need to do to get better to get back on the top of the mountain, the AFC? Let us know in the comments section. You can also reach out to me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, at Tyler Jones Live. And I will see you next time right here on the Ravens Rundown.